Hi everybody, my name is Aaron Schwartz with DPR Construction. I'm Stephanie Dugan, also with DPR Construction. And we're here today to share with you our project, the UC Davis Teaching and Learning Complex. We're so glad that you're able to join us today. We would have loved to do this in person, but under the circumstances we weren't able to. But we're gonna take advantage of, of this opportunity to not only share with you what's happening on site right now, but also how we got here. Teaching and Learning Complex, TLC as we call it for short, is a four-story, 102,000 square foot building located in the heart of the UC Davis campus. TLC is comprised of classrooms and student spaces. The fourth floor is planned as an open office environment. The project's target is LEED Gold, which is the second most stringent of all LEED cert certifications. The site takes up 3.79 acres and sits 71 feet in the air. This project is valued at $70 million. So as we set the scene, it's only appropriate that we discuss job site attire, known as PPE or personal protective equipment. Some PPE is general to a job site and some of it is task specific. The required job site attire is typically a hard hat, safety vest, glasses, and boots. As we go through these videos, you'll see some craft wearing more PPE than others. For example, the guys that are welding are wearing leathers and face shields. So here what we're looking at is our model of our building, using Building Information Modeling, or BIM for short. This video was generated from renderings from our, from our model, uh, which really gives you an idea and a flavor of the building. You can see the, the massing and the colors. Uh, here's that north lobby, that glass north lobby with our, with our large stadium stair, as we call it. Um, the benefit of these stadium stairs is it provides an informal study space for, for students to gather and collaborate. But it, what it also does is it provides an opportunity for students to um, enter the building and go immediately to the second floor. If you think about it, this cl classroom building is designed for about 2,000 students. So at that class change period, you're going to have 2,000 students coming in and 2,000 students going out. So with our north stair and its complementing stair you're seeing here on the south, we're able to get students up to that second floor without congesting the entrances and while providing that great collaborative informal study space. This is the view of the building as you're approaching it from the bike parking area to the south. So you may have heard the term subcontractor. At DPR, we refer to subcontractors as our trade partners. It's only fair to call them trade partners because we're a design build team and we rely on each other. This project would not be a success without great working relationships and fantastic trade partners. A special thanks for all the hard work to date and an appreciation for all of the hard work that is to come. So just a little bit on the delivery method of this project of how the owner went about the procurement of the project. And what I have on the screen here is a traditional design, bid, build, delivery method. And in that delivery method, the owner, in this case UC Davis, would hire an architect and engineers to design the building. And once the design is complete, they would go out to bid and select the lowest bid from the contractors to get their team. Now, in this scenario, the owner uh, is is in, is the is the common piece, and they have the responsibility and the risk of the coordination between the architect and the contract. Also, if you look at the schedule in a design bid jo build job, you have to complete the design, and then you have to bid it out before you can go build it. In design build delivery, as this project is being delivered, we kind of combined the architect and the, and the contractor into a design build entity and here uh, the DPR Smith Group team. What this allows us to do is it allows the owner to contract with one entity and it's our responsibility to coordinate with our design partners and our trade partners. So this provides a schedule advantage because the design does not need to be complete before you go get a contract. It also allows us with our expertise as builders to share ideas and concerns with the design teams so that the end product of the design, the design deliverable is a constructible 
uh, solution and we're set up and ready to go. If you had visited the UC Davis campus prior to October 2019, you would have seen 30,000 square feet of temporary buildings and a steel shade structure that had marked this territory for the last 50 years. Super temporary. Beautiful, aren't they? <laughs> so as I mentioned, we were gonna be able to give you the history of the project and here we go right from the beginning. Stephanie's gonna walk you through a lot of the activities, but what I wanted to share with you all was while this work was going on that we're seeing right now, our building was still being designed. We had a lot of work to get ready to put our new building in place. So this video is roughly two minutes long and it takes you through the journey of the last year. You'll see demolition, abatement, site cleanup, site work, lime treatment of the building pad, the addition of vibro piers, foundation, trenching, craft laying pipe and conduit in the underground, preparation of our vapor barrier, anchor bolt installation, rebar, concrete forms, concrete pours, floor protection, the assembly of our lefting crane using a hydro crane, beams of steel swinging, material moving, and lots of parts in between. Ultimately, you see a building going vertical out of the ground. As you can probably imagine, there are very few dull days on site. Thanks, Stephanie. And where we're jumping in right here is uh, we're, we're working on underground, under slab utilities. And we'll be getting ready to do our base rock and our vapor barrier. You'll see there's the base rock in the yellow. That's our vapor barrier. It comes in pretty quickly. And then soon you'll start to see the slab on grade before. There's the reinforcing and here's our slab on grade right now. So here's where we started pouring the slab on grade. Those sloped rooms were pretty intricate. They were, they took several pours to get them done. And there's our crane and here goes the steel. This is the fun part. And just like that, we have a building. Easy as that. So I wanted to dive into structural steel being that that's where we are in the project and that's where we would have been on a, on a job site tour. So diving into the structural steel, uh, st structural steel is a building material that's used all over the world and for a long time. Can anybody guess what this famous steel building is? Any guesses? The Empire State Building. The Empire State Building in New York City is a st structural steel structure um, and it's a great case study that's used throughout construction on, on how it was done back then. So it's important on a job site visit to really meet the cast of characters that's out there making these great projects a reality. So we're gonna take a couple of minutes and we're, we have a couple of our trade partners sharing their experiences, uh, what they love about their jobs and how they got into the industry. So enjoy. Uh, my name's Ralph Cordaway. Um, I've been in this industry for six years. I'm a rigger with California Erectors. Uh, my favorite part of my job is just getting after it every day and uh, being able to be with my brothers, watch out for them, they watch out for me. You know, you get a camaraderie with, uh, with what we do because um, it's so dangerous, you know, and, and like it just, you have to look out for everybody. You have to look out for what he, he might be going through, what anybody else might be going through. Um, so that's my favorite part of it. But uh, how I got into the industry was uh, I went down to the hall and I I wanted to sign up and they, they told me how to become uh, um, an apprentice iron worker. And that was, that was pretty much it. But uh, why I think that you students should come into this trade is because you make more money here instead of going to college and getting in debt. You'll make money here and you'll be able to buy yourself a house in a few years. This right here is what's called a sleeper bar. This is what we use to uh, pry the iron. Uh, we'll stick it into one of the bolt holes, and depending on the diameter of the hole, we'll use this this end or we'll use this end. For the bigger ones, we use this spoon here. You file their spoon down, and it gets in there and it gives you a better pry, better mechanical advantage. And then this here is our spud we use to uh, tighten up the bolts. My name's Colin Yeager. Uh, I've been in this industry for 11 years now. I mean, you can make 
pretty quick and easy money in this industry. It don't take much, and um, just as long as you show up every day and have a good work ethic, you'll make it. All right, my name is Rob Vassell. I'm the oiler on the crane. Uh, I just pretty much assist the crane operator anything he needs. Uh, also get my experience to become a crane operator. Uh, I've been doing it for six years. I'm actually a crane operator, but on this job, I'm an oiler. Um, my favorite part of the job is um, gratification of you know the whole project coming together at the end because I pretty much see it from the beginning to the end. Um, I got in the industry uh, through other equipment. I used to be a miner and uh, I just kind of rolled into the, the cranes. Uh, I probably get into this industry. Uh, like I said, it's pretty rewarding and um, the money's good. Um, you know, when everybody else is sitting at home uh, out of a job because of the pandemic and uh, things like that, then I'm out here working. Um, I, n I never had a down day since, since the pandemic started. Hi, my name is Michael Hyatt, and I've been in the industry, if you included university time, uh, a little over 30 years. And my role is IOR, I'm the inspector of record. And the favorite part of my job is getting to see good quality craft and being able to verify that quality assurance has been performed. And I've, I got into the industry by, um, I graduated in architecture at university, and I wanted to take a step back and get more involved in construction and learn a little bit more about um, building. And I've been here ever since. And why I think that students should consider a career in the built environment and construction trades and technical education, um, I think it's a very noble thing to be a part of the built environment, uh, to be very, uh, to be a part of shelter and to be a part of infrastructure, um, making sure that people are able to um, live and in a safe environment and to um, have the things that they need to survive. I think it's very good to be a part of that. Thank you. Hi, my name is David. Uh, I've been working for DPR for about a year now, but I've been in the uh, construction industry for a while now. And uh, for DPR on this project, so far I've been uh, coordinating the steel uh, shot drawings and just doing QC for uh, basically all the steel that you've seen going up. Um, what that entails really is uh, working with uh, the detailers who draw the drawings and, and model the building in steel, verifying that they're uh, following the structural details that the structural engineer provides, which are basically um, just a, a typical idea of how it should go together. Once you start putting the real parts together, you get a lot of inconsistencies and, and sometimes we have to work through uh, unique fixes for how to how to deal with that. It's been a lot of fun uh, finding out, you know, how things are really go together and, and difficulties for how a welder gets in or how it's fabricated. We have to come up with uh, fixes sometimes before it gets built and sometimes after it gets built and we, we find out even more new stuff. So um, I'd recommend, you know, this is a good way to get uh, get involved in construction, uh, looking at the details and, and working, you know, working with both the architect and the structural engineer and also with the guys in the field who are doing the work. So it's a fun job. So as David just talked about in those videos, he mentioned the model of and the coordination that the detailers from the steel fabricator uh, perform. And, and so this is a, a still shot of our model um, for our project. And what they do is they go through in every connection, every bolt, every piece of steel, how big or small it is gets modeled in here to make sure we know how all the parts and pieces are gonna go together. And out of this process, as David mentioned, a ton of questions were generated. And we have to be able to answer those questions in a timely manner in order to keep the fabrication on schedule. So this is looking from the southwest corner and then a little bit of an overhead shot of the building. You may recognize architectural elements from previous, from earlier parts of this presentation in this model. I think that's a, a pretty neat, uh, uh, pretty neat to be able to see it go from the model into the field. So here's a video 
of the Cal Erector's crew working on the penthouse. As Stephanie mentioned, this was 72, almost 72 feet up in the air. Uh, one of the things I want everybody to take note of is, is the um, safety precautions that Anthony and the rest of the team up there are, are using. They are tied off to safety cables with lanyards and yo-yos um, to make sure they don't fall. It's a 100% tie off when you're up on the steel and only qualified personnel are up there. Both Kylan and Ralph mentioned the, it being a dangerous job and the very uh, stringent safety protocols keeps everybody safe and make sure we send everybody home at the end of the day in the same or better condition than they showed up that day. I want to hone in a little bit on the north elevation of the building. This will give you a really good view of the structural steel and how it's put together and how it's, uh, how the, what the different elements are. Uh, you know, we, you see columns and you see beams and then you see these X braces, but what is all of this doing here? I wanna unpack this for everybody for just a minute. To do that, I wanna go back and just may explain a very uh, basic structural engineering concept. And that's the concept between a gravity load and a lateral load. A gravity load, uh, is essentially the weight of the structure and everything in it. And how does the building stand up and not fall down uh, under just a normal condition? So those gravity loads are things like the steel, the concrete in the building, all the walls, all the mechanical equipment, everything in there that comprises the gravity load. In addition to the gravity load, we have to consider forces that may come in from the side. What are those forces? Things like wind, Wind is a typical lateral force on a building. The other one here in California that we really need to focus on is seismic forces, forces that lateral force is created by an earthquake. To better show you guys, show everybody um, what we mean by a seismic load, I want to share just a couple of snippets of video from the UC San Diego shake table. And this shake table is a large piece of equipment that allows them to mimic seismic events and they're able to build buildings on top of it. So as you see here, you can see the building wiggling back and forth. Uh, this is, this is an, an earthquake that they're simulating and they have sensors and cameras all hooked up to this building so that they can learn about the forces and how the building is reacting. So just a really neat way to kind of help hopefully explain lateral forces and seismic forces within a building. There's a ton of great material on the internet. You go search for shake table and seismic engineering. There's, there's a ton of great information out there for you to learn about this if this is something you're interested in. So now that we know about the gravity loads and the horizontal loads, the lateral loads, I wanted to revisit that north elevation and talk about what we're seeing. So as you can see here that I've highlighted, there's a series of beams and columns that are designed to carry the weight of the building and everything inside of it, its infrastructure, the dead load, and then the occupants and contents of the building, which we refer to as the live load. Now, if we look at the X braces I met, uh, mentioned earlier, those are actually called buckling restrain braces or BRBs for short. And these are the lateral force resisting system or seismic force resistance. This is from the plan view of what these BRBs look like in the plan. And one of the most gratifying parts of our job is taking these black and white plans and making them a reality. And here's that black and white plan overlaid on that portion of the building. And you can see how everything lines up again, turning that design into a reality. Now, in that first video, did anybody notice that there was a welder standing, hanging off the side of the building 32 feet in the air? I did. What's he doing out there? Well, he's out there making welds at some of these important connections. Throughout the building, many of the connections require field welding after the pieces are put together. It's, it's a critical part of the process in order to get the strength out of the steel design. So in that seismic event, your building does not uh, fall over. 
So there are thousands of welds in this building that were completed, many of which, which had to be done on site. One of my favorite parts of my job was the fact that I got to go out and take pictures of what was like the 4th of July every day out there. Sparks flying, molten metal flying everywhere. This is a uh, video of one of the welders cutting a backup bar out of a connection so that they could get in and ultrasonically test that weld to make sure that there were no defects that would compromise the strength of that weld. That's the quality assurance process. And here's another couple close-up photos that really highlight the unique situations that, that these welders have to get themselves into in order to make the welds on these, on these connections. But how do they know what they're supposed to be welding out there? Well, in the plans, every single weld is called out. Every, we, every one of those arrows, those weld call-outs, tells the welder what type of weld, where it needs to be, and how big it needs to be. And sometimes you have to reference supplemental information like a table elsewhere in the plans to figure out exactly what needs to be done. So it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of understanding what you're doing in terms of welding and what is the structural engineer telling you you need to do in this situation. We had a really unique opportunity out here. Our, our trade partner, Cal Erectors, uh, allowed us to put a GoPro camera up on the crane just below what they call the headache ball. Um, you'll actually be able to see the GoPro camera in the shadow uh, connected just below that ball. So the piece that we're going to be watching go into place is the piece I highlighted here, this beam. Uh, it's about 50 feet long. Uh, can anybody venture a guess on how much that beam weighs? Maybe 100 pounds, 500 pounds? Any guesses? How about 5,000 pounds, the weight of a full-size pickup truck? This one piece of steel weighs as much as a pickup truck. So you gotta imagine it's fairly hard to, to handle and, and manage. It can be very dangerous. So in this video, we're gonna watch Ralph in the yellow shirt, who you met earlier, and his partner, Nick. They're responsible to safely rig up the steel down on the ground with chokers and get it ready to go up by, on the crane. So here we go from the, uh, from the crane's eye view and the beam swinging in over the slab, heading over to its final resting place. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead just a second. So we can see this 5,000 pound beam being lowered into place. So as it's coming into place, you can see the, the guys on the left side of the screen, this thing is in charge. They're not really able to move it much. Um, it's, so they have to kind of work with it to get it in the right position, communicating with hand signals to the crane um, and, and making sure that they get it positioned correctly. So now they're getting the first end, um, trying to get the first end into place. And so here they've got the first end into place and they're swinging the other end in. So now we're lined up. We're lined up on our two columns. We're ready to bolt this thing in place. So what we don't see off camera is the team is putting two bolts into this end underneath where we are. And you're gonna see Kylan's yellow orange hard hat here, right here. Here he goes. So now he, because it's only bolted on one end, he's gonna drop down and kind of shimmy across the beam uh, to the other end so he's a little more stable instead of trying to walk on top of it. And now here he goes with his bar Ralph showed you and he's sticking the bar in. And he's pulling on it and he's lining up those bolt holes and here in a second he's going to grab his spud wrench. And they're right there. He needs a little extra leverage so there he goes and he's, he's working that connection to try to get those bolt holes lined up. Still working it and he's going to get it. You're gonna see the bar come through if you watch closely. And now he's grabbing bolts and he's putting bolts in. And he's gonna get two bolts in there so it's secured. And his partner on the other end of this beam is walking out there right now because he knows Kylan's almost done. So as soon as Kylan has that set up with bolted, now the crane is letting off tension. They're unhooking the chokers and they're cutting the crane loose to go back and get the next piece. So just a great example of teamwork and the coordination required 
to set each piece of steel. Uh, a couple of my favorite pictures just from the job site. I love the picture on the right of Anthony on top of that column. Uh, I always laugh, like, how did he get up there? It was, he, he had to climb up that, uh, that column like a palm tree uh, to get up there. But if, uh, if you're a climber or a ballet dancer, the, being an iron worker may be your calling because it's, it's just awesome to watch what these uh, men and women are able to do up on the steel uh, every day. Uh, here's another video I wanted to share with you. This is uh, was a highlight I know for me on the job. And these are our long span beams. At our auditorium, which seats 425 people, uh, we needed a big open space. So we needed big long beams so we didn't have any columns in the middle of a classroom. So to do that, these beams are about 76 feet long, which is too long to put on a truck. So they actually had to be trucked to the job site in two pieces and then welded together into a single piece. And here you go, like a well-oiled machine, it was exactly positioned and rigged how they needed to it. Needed it. They picked it up, spun it, and now you see the teams on both ends getting ready to uh, make the connections there. Uh, this was a highlight for me. It was something that really, uh, we had talked a lot about during design was these long span beams. And there they are going into place. Uh, we had a bit of a fan club out here. I love to tell people about this. Just off to the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can't really see them, but we had a, a group of local Davis residents that loved watching the steel go up so much. They used to bring lawn chairs and their coffee out every day and watch the, uh, the Calorectors team put the building up. Kind of a fun story to tell about the project. And this uh, last video I wanted to share just really shows the teamwork. If you're looking down at near the iron pile, you see Ralph and Nick rigging up the steel as the crane's picking it up. And now the crane's swinging it over to where the connection crew is up on the building. Uh, the raising gang is putting it, uh, the steel in place. But keep an eye on Ralph and Nick. They're working with Dave on the forklift to get ready for those next pieces that need to go into place. Because as soon as Kylan and the team up on the building is done putting that last piece in, that crane's gonna go over and every piece needs to be ready to pick. Um, so it really just is it's a great example of the teamwork and the planning that's required. When they start a day, they know exactly which pieces and how many pieces they are going to put into place. And more importantly, exactly what order those pieces need to be attached to the crane. As you saw in that earlier picture, they can attach up to five pieces of steel at one time. If one of those pieces is in the wrong order, they have to go set those pieces of steel back down and pick them back up in the right order so that they can lower it down and put each one of them into place. So at TLC, we're passionate about sustainability. On our job site, we had a vision to completely eliminate single-use plastic water bottles, but unfortunately due to COVID, we were not able to execute that plan. Listed are some of the measures that we've implemented to make sure to make our job site greener. You can see on the next slide, you'll see photos of the recycle bins that we have throughout the sites, as well as banker boxes for paper recycling. We encourage the use by both our DPR trailer team and our trade partners. Although we couldn't completely eliminate plastic, our trailer team and inspectors prefer the use of an Alhambra refill station, which you'll see on the next slide. You will also see a photo of a friendly reminder to turn the lights off when you leave. Sustainability isn't just a couple of actions, but it's rather a lifestyle. At TLC, we take every opportunity to educate and encourage green habits. And that we have Stephanie to thank for a lot of our sustainability efforts on our, on our project. Um, these are not things that are typical on construction sites. Uh, construction has notoriously been a rather ungreen uh, process. So trying to implement these green processes and make it part of the way we perform construction um, is really uh, what we're trying to change the conversation about. And thanks, Stephanie, for, for, for uh, leading us on that effort. And thank, thank all of you for taking the time to watch the video and learn about our project and hopefully learn something about structural steel. Uh, we wish again it could be done in person, um, but next year, if, if we're able to, we can show, we can do a, a job site tour of a nearly completed building this time of year. So thanks to everybody again and uh, be well and we'll talk to everybody soon.